variety of, of tools being employed in, uh, on a project-based meeting. So given it does a upfront meeting to understand what your project is, generate a quote based on the number of hours and the types of services we're going to provide, um, and move forward with that scope in mind. So human factors is a growing field. I am presented with job offers regularly to leave my PhD program, but I say no. Not yet. <laughs> um, and this is an international need. There's companies all throughout the world that do consultancy and even embedded within large companies like Johnson & Johnson or um, John Deere also has one of them. But within the United States, you're mainly focusing in those tech hubs and I want to bring it um, to South Dakota because there are startups with needs. There's people that come and ask me daily, hey, how much would it cost for you to work on this project for me? I have so many people coming to me with projects that I can't do them because I'm in a PhD program. So I do it on the side in my free time at the moment, but look to scale that. Well, you lost all the text on this side. So again, my apologies. Uh, my goals here are that we have a great USD uh, program in human factors engineering and zero jobs. If I want to stay in the state, I have to work remotely. We'll start my own company, and I offer to the latter. Um, but there's talent that's not being retained. This talent can be used to grow companies within South Dakota and procure technologies um, to bring more jobs to the state. Areas of application are um, across the board. Again, I've touched on a couple of these, but we can really get into anywhere there's um, a human involved. Our one-year goal was to uh, capture uh, $37,500 of the local market, in which we estimated the 250 hours. Right now, we've secured 220 hours. Um, again, these are just projects that are coming, and I have to say, hey, wait, I can't take on another project yet. Cool, cool. Move on to company values in which we focus and make sure that we highlight the data and let the data talk. I'm not there to sell you human factors. I'm there to expose flaws within your um, product and offer solutions for improvement based on data gathered by um, user experience. Currently, we've re received some funding to support business consultation, incorporation fees, and um, bookkeeping and accounting. But future needs will be the securement of standards and documentation for the more highly regulated fields like medical devices. Also computers and software to help with the data processing and recording. Um, and the audio video setup so I can actually capture something without some crazy notes. Um, and there's a lot of things that I missed the first time. So I want to get as much information from those interactions with users as possible. So from there, you get some of my contact information. Again, I, I I apologize, but I also blame online Microsoft PowerPoint publicly, I'll blame that. Um, but I would love for anybody to connect and continue the conversation afterwards as well. So your bill rate is $150 an hour. Does that, does that take into consideration your wrap, your expenses, and everything else on top of that? Yeah, so the cool thing with Human Factors is um, give me a computer, some video cameras, and um, my knowledge. I can do a, a work, work well with a very upfront cost. Okay. And how many people do you how many people do you want to have in the first year? Sure. So interfacing right now in as a um, interfacing with a grad school program with internships is likely the best way to get some traction started. Um, and I've already talked to a couple in which have interest. Um, it's just balancing that with um, my ability to take on more projects. So the idea would be to scale to one or two more right now and then continue that growth over time. So when you complete your PhD, you're now really, you have your company, Humanit, mm -hmm. which is a consulting firm. Correct. And so then what's that goal, three years out? Three years out. Um, Cheesily, I say do what I love, but I mean bring human factors into South Dakota companies and um, really make it the norm to expect more and produce high quality product within the state. So are you going to focus on product, product, you know, physical products, or are you going to be looking at UX design or existing, you know, what 
websites, apps, things like that? Sure, so products is the usually the umbrella term that catches things that are more than under that umbrella, but I work with software, I work with website design, things like that as well, physical products, like medical devices, um, also within the processes space, so understanding how a nurse delivers medication. Maybe the problem isn't these individual medical devices, but there's something along the process that leads to an error occurring. So how big do you think the total market is in South Coast where you're trying to serve? That's a very difficult number for me to capture, and I've been told by several people it's a difficult number to capture. Um, and in short, I don't know. And that's probably not what you're looking for, but... Um, I can tell you. Okay. You probably have about 30 to 40 million dollars in capturable revenue in this, in this space. And there's a lot of reasons why. Um, one, of, one of which is anybody who uses manufacturing is going to want to do process improvement, which is going to form, which is going to, I, I do know what manufacturing is. Oh, I love it. Um, and then the Florida Little Star there, there needs to be another one up in the Northwest Florida because the University of West Florida has a manufacturer. Oh, I went as far as state. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but that's what they do, right? Um, the military, if you go on to, you know, sam.gov and you punch in human factors engineering, there's contracts that are abound for that. It's a, it's a skill set that's greatly needed. I applaud you for, for going after that. Okay. Um, yeah, it actually started within the military sector and a design of interface for pilots. And exactly. Aircraft. Aircraft. Well, again, Lockheed, yep. Dr. Grumman, all of that. Um, one thing that I think that you should also think about um, is where I think you could we could probably build an entire industry around is um, human factor um, engineering and digital twins. Interesting. So you've got, for instance, I'm going to bring NVIDIA up, you're probably going to hear me keynote, but, but the big thing with, with NVIDIA, what NVIDIA is doing is they're taking the entire BM, they've taken the entire BMW factory in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and they have turned it into an entire digital twin. They will not build another car physically until they build the car in the digital twin. It's a massive amount of human factors engineering. So there isn't anybody that I know of in the entire tech space that does anything that you do with digital twins. And if you punch that into uh, government, you're looking at hundreds of millions, if not millions of dollars in projects that are, that are being made to talk about. Ships, air, you know, aircraft carriers, buildings, advanced battle management systems, the list goes on. Sure. So. Okay, so if, if that's really a size of the market, it sounds it's big. big, right, which means it can be a little bit, you ask a little bit about <coughs> staffing and bringing up something big. So what other kinds of staffing then do you think you'd be needing as far as resources go? Oh, sure. Oh. Are you incorporated and have your own company? I am. Because there's a lot of contracts. Yes. Twenty-three yeah, percent like of all business at NASA has to go small business owned. Anything that's going to be funded, either direct contract or subcontract. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty-three percent of the half billion dollars. Yeah. 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 Ye